This video was brought to you by the following website. Hi everyone, this is Josh Yu, Y Khan Yap, Alex Elenberg, and Ashley Church, and we are group B29. Today we will be discussing combinations with repetition, specifically what they are, when they should be used, and provide a few examples. Before we begin, it is important to be familiar with permutations since they are closely related to combinations. First off, let's explore the definition of a combination. In mathematics, a combination is a way of selecting a set amount of R things out of a larger group of N objects. And the order of those K things are selected does not matter. That is, combinations are used to count unordered selections of objects. Using the combination method, you can easily solve for these types of counting problems. In order to find the number of combinations, you can use the following formula. It is n factorial over r factorial times n minus r factorial. This is the same as writing n choose r, where n is the number of things to choose from, and you choose r of them. To shorten this, you can simply put it in parentheses, shown here, and when spoken, you would say n choose r. The following are other ways combinations can be noted, making it important to familiarize yourself with these. Okay, we have C and R, which is the same as which is the same as also and finally the formula from the previous slide. Before we show some examples, it's important to show why the combination formula works. In general, we can see the following things. We let C and R be the number of ways to generate unordered combinations. The number of ordered combinations, which is R permutations, is P and R. The number of ways to order a single one of these R permutations is P R R. The total number of unordered combinations is the total number of ordered combinations, which is R permutations, divided by the number of ways to order each combination. So we can see that C and R is equal to P and R over P R R, which is also equal to N factorial over N minus R factorial, all divided by R factorial divided by R minus R factorial, which is the same as saying N factorial over R factorial times N times N minus R factorial. Now, if we look at it more specifically, we can use this common example to really understand the proof. We let C 52.5 be the number of ways to generate unordered poker hands. The number of ordered poker hands is P525, which is 311,875,200. The number of ways to order a single poker hand is P55, which is 5 factorial, and that is 120. The total number of unordered poker hands is the total number of ordered hands divided by the number of ways to order each hand. Thus, we see that C of 52.5 is equal to P52.5 over P55. So now that we understand the combination formula, let's use it by starting with a simple example by using the previous formula. Remember, though, that this example shows combinations without repetition. We will be explaining combinations with repetition afterwards. 
So our question is, how many different ways can a group of four dogs be chosen from 15 dogs? From the question, we see that n would be the total number of elements, which is 15, and r would be 4, since the number of possible combinations we are looking for of those dogs is 15. So we see that there would be 15 choose 4 possible combinations. Using, for, using the formula, we have 15 factorial over 4 factorial times 11 factorial, which is equal to 15 times 14 times 13 times 12 over 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And this turns out to be 1,365. So we see that there are 1,365 different groups of four dogs that could be formed. So now we finally know what combinations are, the formula, how the formula works, and how to use it. However, we have only touched on combinations without repetition, but we need to focus the attention on combinations with repetition since they are equally important. Combinations with repetition simply means allowing the elements of a selection n to be used over again while finding a combination of r. For example, let's say that they are, there are five types of alcohol at a party, whiskey, beer, vodka, rum, and tequila. If you are only allowed to have three drinks at a party, how many variations are there? Thus, this differs because one variation of the combination with repetition could be whiskey, 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 vodka, tequila, vodka, rum, rum, and whiskey. Combinations without repetition are still counted as well, though. It simply includes the, op the option that repetitions can occur. So this is the formula for combinations with repetition. It is n plus r minus 1, choose r, which is the same as saying n plus r minus 1 factorial over r factorial times n minus 1 factorial, where n is the number of things to choose from, and you can choose r of them. Let's look at how to use this formula in the following examples. First, let's look at the question of how many solutions there are to the following equation. x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 equals 17 where x1, x2, x3, and x4 are non-negative integers. To count the number of solutions, we note that a solution corresponds to a way of selecting 17 items from a set with four elements, so that x1 items of type 1, x2 items of type 2, x3 items of type 3, and x4 items of type 4 are chosen. Hence, the number of solutions is equal to the number of 17 combinations with repetition allowed from a set with four elements. From the theorem we just showed, we can see that there are C 4 plus 17 minus 1 17 options, which is C 20 17 which is also equal to C23, which is equal to 1,140. In conclusion, combination formulas are extremely valuable when trying to count a complex situation. Understanding how and when to use the combination with repetition formula is especially useful when writing code for a program or database. This makes an integral part of discrete mathematics. Thanks for watching.